All right, so welcome to another deep dive, everybody. Yeah. And uh, today we are going to be doing something pretty different. Mm. We go behind the scenes, like really behind the scenes, of disc golf course design. Very cool. Yeah. So think about this. You are going to be basically walking the grounds of Richard Moya Park in Austin, Texas, with someone as they envision each hole of a brand new course. Oh. It's going to be like getting to peek inside their brain, you know, right from the initial spark of the idea. That's a really cool concept. I've always wondered what that process looks like, you know, just starting with nothing and then ending up with a fully playable 18 holes. It's going to be so interesting to see how it all comes together. Yeah, and uh, and speaking of like uh, starting with nothing, this park doesn't have a course yet. Mm -hmm. So it really is like watching someone create something from scratch. Oh, so like a truly blank canvas, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, just to add to like uh, the whole you know visual of this place, this park's near the airport. So picture this, right? You're lining up a putt, and a plane soars overhead. Whoa. Yeah, talk about a unique backdrop. I mean, that would be a pretty unforgettable round, wouldn't it? I'd be so distracted. Oh, totally, totally. OK, so let's uh, let's tee off, so to speak, on this hole-by-hole -hole walkthrough. So hole one, short and shaded. And fittingly, it has a clear view of those planes taking off. It's like a welcoming postcard for the course. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get it, like setting the scene. Right. Right, exactly. Now, hole two has, uh, well, I'd say it has a little bit of a gulp factor to it. Oh. Yeah, it's slightly downhill, and there's this tiny pond right next to the basket. It gives it that island green feel. Ah, uh, the classic island green. I bet that gets players' hearts racing, especially if there's a water hazard. In oh, totally. It's definitely a risk-reward situation. Now, hole three, this one's really interesting. It actually takes you under a pedestrian bridge, which I have never seen on a course before. Hmm. Under a bridge? That's unique. I know. Is that like a common design feature? Have you ever seen that? Not really, no. I mean, you see courses that use existing structures sometimes, like tunnels maybe, or, you know, going around buildings. But a bridge? That's yeah. pretty cool. I wonder how they incorporate it into the gameplay. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it creates like a natural tunnel, but with options to approach the basket from either side. So yeah. there's some strategy involved there. Oh, okay. So it's not just a gimmick. They're actually using it to add a layer of decision making to the hole. Right, exactly. All right, so then we've got holes four, five, and six. They seem to be a bit more, I don't know, traditional. It's a mix of tree-lined fairways and open shots. Mm -hmm. And the distances vary to keep things interesting. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty standard approach. You want to test players' skills in different ways. Mm. So having a mix of long and short holes, open and wooded areas, that's all part of good course design. Right, and speaking of variety, hole seven is described as like this hidden gem tucked away yeah. near some picnic tables. It's like you stumble upon it almost by accident. Oh, that's cool. A little surprise tucked away in the course. Yeah. Okay, then we come to holes eight and nine. And these ones really play with the visuals, I think. First, you've got two short tunnel shots, so you really got to be accurate. Okay. But then, boom, you come out to a longer open shot, but with these trees strategically placed like popcorn clouds. Oh, I love that description. Popcorn clouds, that's very visual. I know, right? Uh, I can totally picture it. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like the, the designer is really thinking about the aesthetics of the course, as well as the playability. And then, get ready for this, we enter the tree tunnel zone. Oh. Yeah, so from hold 10 through 13, it's all about navigating these tunnels. Wow, that sounds intense. Do they vary at all, or is it just tunnel after tunnel after tunnel? Well, they all have their own personality. Some are tight and twisty, others are longer and more forgiving. Okay, so it's not just a monotonous tunnel fest. Right, and it all culminates with hole 13, which is described as particularly tight and challenging. All right, so a real test of skill. Totally, and you know it's funny, Right after hole 13, the notes mention a restroom and lunch break. Like the designer saying, okay, take a breather, you're going to need it. Yeah, smart. A good halfway point to regroup and refuel before the back nine. Right. So are you ready for what comes next? Because uh, let me tell you, things are about to get serious. Bring it on. I'm all ears. Okay, so we're transitioning to the long holes. And uh, hole 14 is described as like a warm-up. Hmm. But it's nearly 700 feet long. Whoa. Okay, that's a decent distance. And often there's a tailwind. Oh, so you can really let those discs fly. Yeah, and the baskets nestles in the shade, so, mm -hmm. you know, adds a little something extra. Adds to the challenge, for sure. <clears throat> Judging the distance with a tailwind can be tricky. Right, and speaking of challenge, I'm not sure how much finesse you're gonna need for a hole 15, because this is the monster hole, right? Okay, lay it on me. Over a thousand feet, 
maybe even closer to 1500. Whoa, okay. That's a beast. I know, right? And get this, there are multiple fairways to choose from. What? Multiple fairways? That's wild. I've never heard of that before. Me neither. So there's like a wide open left fairway for those who just want to like grip it and rip it. Okay, makes sense. Then there's a technical middle path that weaves through obstacles. So accuracy is key there. Right, for the more strategic players. And then for the truly adventurous, there's a right fairway that starts wooded and that opens up to this vast expanse. Like, it's crazy. So it's like choosing your own adventure out on the course. That's really cool. I wonder how many people would dare try that right fairway. Yeah, it would definitely be a challenge. Okay, we're in the home stretch now. Mm -hmm. Holes 16, 17, and 18. And these are described as a series of bomb shots. Bomb shots sounds intense. Yeah, they take advantage of the natural hills and valleys, so you're basically launching these discs into the wild blue yonder. I love that. It sounds like the designer is really using the natural terrain to create some dramatic shots. Exactly. And then finally, hole 18 brings us full circle, finishing back near the parking area. Nice. A good way to end the journey. Right. It's like close the book on great story. But you know what? Yeah. After walking through all 18 holes of this, this imaginary course, I'm left with one, one burning question. Okay, what's that? I mean, with all these incredible features, do you think this course could be too intimidating for newer players? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, it's like a, it's a balancing act, right? You want a challenge for the experienced players, but you don't want to scare away the newbies. So how does a designer even achieve that? Like, especially with a course like this. I mean, some of these holes sound pretty intense. Well, offering multiple fairways, like on that hole 15, that's a good start. It lets players kind of choose their own adventure. You know what I mean? Like beginners can take the easier route and more experienced players can really test themselves. Right. It's like choosing your difficulty level in a video game or something. Exactly. And you can also, you know, design shorter holes that are more technical. So it's right. not just about bombing it, you know, mm -hmm. it's about accuracy and finesse too. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Makes sense. So it really is all about variety and options, huh? Absolutely. And you also got to remember that, like, uh, there are practical limitations, too, like land availability, permits, budget, all that stuff. Uh, right. The real world gets in the way sometimes. Yeah, unfortunately. So, you know, building a dream course is a lot harder than it sounds. I bet. And then there's also, like, uh, you know, the environmental impact to consider. You don't want to just bulldoze a forest to make a disc golf course. No, absolutely not. Sustainability is huge these days. You got to minimize your impact on the environment. Mm -hmm. You know, use existing paths whenever possible. Only clear what's absolutely necessary. So working with nature, not against it. Exactly. And you know, that kind of brings me to another really cool thing about course design these days. Technology. They've got these software programs now that let you create like incredibly detailed 3D models of the courses. Whoa, really? Like a virtual disc golf simulator or something? Yeah, kind of like that. You can map out the terrain, add trees and obstacles. You can even simulate wind conditions. Wow, that's wild. It's a game changer for sure. Okay, so let's, um, let's bring it back to our mystery designer here in Austin. What are some of the things that really stand out to you about their approach? Well, first of all, they're really good at using what's already there. You know, like the planes taking off, the bridge, the hills and valleys. It's not just background noise. It's part of the experience. Right. Like they're turning the whole park into a disc golf playground. Exactly. And they've also done a great job of incorporating a variety of shots. Long bombs, technical finesse shots, even some hidden gems to reward exploration. And let's not forget that lunch break. Shows they're thinking about the player's needs. Yeah, for sure. It's all about creating a well-rounded experience. Right, right. So this designer has created something pretty special, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. But, you know, what I find most inspiring is that it all started with one person's vision, their own personal interpretation of this park and how it could be used for disc golf. That's pretty cool when you think about it. It really is. It makes you wonder how many other potential disc golf courses are out there just waiting to be discovered. It really does. It makes you want to grab some discs and go exploring, you know, <laughs> see what you can find. Yeah. Okay, but I'm curious. What really stood out to you about this course? Like, what impressed you the most? Hmm. You know, I think it was the attention to detail. It's clear this designer really thought about every little thing, like the placement of the trees, those unique features like the bridge. They even put in a restroom and a lunch area, which is really thoughtful. Right. Like, they're not just designing course, they're designing an experience. Exactly. It makes me wonder, if you were designing a course, what would be, like, your signature element? You know, what would make your course stand out from all the others? Oh, that's a tough one. 
there are so many cool things you could do. Hmm. But if I had to choose, I think I'd really focus on water features. And I'd use them in a unique way, you know? Okay, like what? Give me an example. Well, maybe a series of island greens connected by bridges. Or a hole where you have to throw over a waterfall to reach the basket. Whoa, okay. That's a pretty epic image. I can see it now, the disc flying through the mist. Yeah, it's all about creating those wow moments for the players. So you're all about the spectacle, huh? The visual drama. Yeah, something like that. But of course, it can't just be about looks. It has to be challenging, too. I'd want my course to really test player skills. So, no walk in the park, then? Haha, <laughs> not exactly. I think a good course should be both challenging and rewarding. That's a good point. Yeah. Gotta find that sweet spot. Yeah, where everyone can have fun, no matter their skill level. Right. But it's not just about the course itself, is it? It's about the community that forms around it, too. Oh, absolutely. Disc golf is a very social sport. A good course can become a real hub for the community. Yeah, I love that about disc golf. It brings people together. It does. Well, I gotta say, this deep dive has been really eye-opening for me. I'm seeing disc golf in a whole new light now. Yeah, me too. It's more than just a game. Exactly. It's a way to express creativity, connect with people, enjoy nature. And who knows, maybe one of our listeners will be inspired to design their own course someday. That would be amazing. So to all our listeners out there, keep throwing, keep exploring, and keep those discs flying.